coverage you can count on. KOMU 8 News starts now. Two days into President Biden's term, but the Senate still has business left over from the last administration. And now a date is set for the start of President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. Good evening, everyone. I'm Noah Klein. Thanks for joining us tonight. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says the trial could start as soon as the week of February the 8th. Schumer says the Senate is prepared to receive the impeachment article come Monday. From there, House impeachment managers and the former president's defense team will have time to put together their arguments. Schumer says he's ready to get the trial underway. We all want to put this awful chapter in our nation's history behind us. But healing and unity will only come if there is truth and accountability. And that is what this trial will provide. As a reminder, the Senate's role is to decide whether to convict President Trump of the charge. That would require two-thirds of senators to vote in favor of the charge. So at least 17 Republicans would have to join all of the Democrats in order, in order to convict him. Meanwhile, President Biden has been busy in his first few days in office. Today, he outlined what he calls the American Rescue Plan to get the country's economy back up and running. Biden signed two executive orders today. The first focuses on COVID-19 relief, including expanding food assistance and rent help. The second includes support for federal employees, including a minimum wage hike to $15 an hour for those federal employees. The president says his administration's plan has bipartisan support. On top of the executive orders signed today, President Biden also signed three executive orders earlier this week that reversed Trump-era policies focused on immigration. City of Refuge in Columbia is a nonprofit that helps refugees adjust to life in America. They say that these policy changes will impact refugees and immigrants in mid-Missouri. During the Trump administration, as little as 15,000 refugees were allowed in the country per year. Biden plans to bump that to 125,000. This uh, community has been made better because of these families. And um, we're really excited to see more families reunited, uh, more people from similar countries or backgrounds who want to get involved with our community. Biden also signed other executive orders, changing the country's policies toward refugees. He ended the Trump era policy banning travel here from Muslim majority countries and added new protections for those under DACA. Meanwhile, more than a dozen Capitol Police and 150 National Guard members who were deployed to Washington for security during President Biden's inauguration have tested positive for COVID-19. The chairman of the U.S. Capitol Police Labor Committee confirmed to NBC News 19 Capitol Police officers have tested positive for the virus since January 6th. A defense official also told NBC News at least 150 National Guard members who have deployed to Washington have tested positive for the virus. Meanwhile, National Guard troops can now rest inside the U.S. Capitol again after lawmakers expressed outrage over the troops being sent to a parking garage. Lawmakers say Capitol Police sent the troops to the heated garage to reduce foot traffic, tra traffic inside the Capitol while Congress is in session. But the troops were brought back after lawmakers reacted to how the troops were being treated. I don't think a single senator feels that was acceptable. I'm glad the situation was resolved and I hope we learn exactly what happened. Capitol Police have not commented on the situation. It's going to be a bit of a chilly night. We'll tell you our latest thoughts coming up. Okay, Jacob, we'll check back today. Boone Hospital Center, MU Healthcare, and the Boone County Health Department joined together to warn about limited vaccine supply. The response was so overwhelming, they wanted to deliver a joint message. Now remember, Missouri already allows health care workers and long-term care facility residents to get vaccinations. That's Phase 1A. Also open is Phase 1B, Tier 1. That's for first responders. Tier 2 includes seniors and other groups like those at higher risk. No counties in mid-Missouri have started vaccinating those in Tier 2. People not in these categories, of course, want to know when more supply is coming and when Phase 2 will begin. Boone County officials do not know when the next shipment is coming. You know, we know that people are really anxious and really um, are ready to get the vaccine, and we absolutely agree. We're at, we also want people to get the vaccine, but we just don't have the supply available to be able to give the vaccine to large groups of people at this time. For more information about the vaccine, fill out the health department's COVID-19 survey to get updates. That survey can be found on our website over at KOMU.com. 
Turning now to the latest numbers, Boone County reported 74 new cases today, pushing the county over 16,000 total cases since the start of the pandemic. Meanwhile, over the past 48 hours, Callaway County reported 39 new cases. The county also reported one new death. Cole County has started mailing out its COVID-19 supplies to residents. The kits include masks, even as the county advises using masks without a mandate. KOMU8's Liam Garrity tells us more about Cole County's $300,000 project. For more updates on Cole County COVID-19 precautions, go to our website over at KOMU.com. After over six months of no curbside recycling pickup, the City of Columbia is resuming the service next month. Starting February 1st, curbside recycling at home will resume. Trash and recycling have been a controversial subject in recent months with debates over roll carts, city-branded trash bags, and overflowing receptacles. One Columbia resident says the curbside pickup will make things more convenient for her family. Have curbside pickup. I mean, we've been having to store everything in our garage and take it out, you know, whenever we have the time to. Um, a lot of times these bins are overflowing when I come by. Sometimes I have to go to multiple sites to get it all taken care of, so it'll be a lot nicer to have someone come by and pick it up for us. Customers will receive a mailer to confirm their every other week recycling schedule. A second person died today after a house fire in Iberia last night. Officials say they responded to the fire just before 6 last night after reports of an explosion. They say they found one person dead inside the home. A second person later died at the hospital. Officials say they are still looking into what happened for this fire. Here's what's happening right now. The Washington Post is reporting that President Trump considered a plan back in January to replace the acting attorney general with a lawyer that would push his unfounded voter fraud claims. The plan would have pushed out the then acting attorney general, Jeffrey Rosen, to bring in a Justice Department lawyer to keep the former president in power. Now, the Washington Post reports he turned around only when dissuaded by several people involved in this plan. Chiefs fans have been sitting on edge ever since Patrick Mahomes came up woozy after that hit last Sunday. But fans can take a deep breath now because Mahomes has been cleared c from concussion protocol. KOMU8 Sports Tyler Drizenga joins us now to tell us what today's announcement exactly means, Tyler. Yeah, when Mahomes went down during last Sunday's game, the Chiefs season rested in the hands of backup quarterback Chad Henney. And he delivered here from Mahomes himself coming up in sports. Happy to see everyone's excited about that game. All right, thanks, Tyler. A lake, an outdoor theater, and a unique golf experience. All of these are just part of a new development coming to Ashland. KOMU8's Logan Perone tells us how it will impact one small town. Still ahead, a small town is turning to an unusual source to fund a big expense. Head for us where the mayor is hoping to find the funds for a new tornado siren. Plus, what would you do with the third largest lottery jackpot in American history? And we are also tracking this storm system pressing in from the south. It's set to arrive Sunday night into Monday. Rain for much of mid-Missouri for at least a good portion of the event, but we could see some wintry weather just up to our northwest. We'll tell you what the impacts may be and give you a complete forecast after the break. Welcome back. The town of Rennick is in need of a new emergency warning system. But say they have no way to pay for a new one. If you're interested in donating to the GoFundMe, we have a link to it on our website over at KOMU.com. And we also have an interactive map of some of the severe weather Rennick has seen in recent years. And, of course, any time we talk severe weather, we want to bring in our expert here. So Jacob Vanderpool joins me now. And, Jacob, just something we want to get right here, tornado sirens are only for people who are outside. Noah, you're absolutely correct. That is what the tornado sirens are for. They're meant to be heard by people that are outside the walls of a building. And again, it's very, very important that every town has their own set of tornado sirens. Welcome back. Instacart is cutting more than 1,800 jobs. Most of those employees are in-store shoppers who pick up groceries and hand them off to other people to deliver. The company says it's because of changes to how it works with grocery stores. Many grocery stores are hiring their own in-store shoppers to fulfill orders. What would you do with a billion dollars? Well, the Mega Million numbers are out, and someone could be seeing that jackpot. It's the third highest jackpot in history, and it has been climbing since mid-September. That's the last time there was a winner. That's the longest stretch ever with no winner, and we don't want to keep you waiting for this. We got it for you. What we got? Mega Millions? Here we go. I got someone's number right here. Four, 26, 42, 50, 60, 24. Best of luck. Call me if you win. 